right, let me do it the other way around. Let's look at the structure of a compound. So, and then we're going to fill out the chart. So let us say we have chloropropane. So the mass of chloropropane, that would be chlorine is 35. We have three carbons, that's 36. And then seven hydrogen, that's a mass of 78. So the molecular mass of our compound is 78. We're not going to use the decimal in this case for chlorine. Let us say the molecule it fragments here. All right. If it fragments here, it means that we will get one fragment with C2H5, right? So if it breaks here, we get C2H5, and that is a mass of 29 would also get one with CH2 and Cl. The chlorine is 35 plus 14, that is 49. So the CH2 Cl fragment, that would be 49. Let us say it breaks. Yeah, let me do a next one. Let us say it breaks here. If it breaks here, you would get a fragment for 15 CH3. That would be all right, 15. And then for this part now, all of over here, let's add up that. The current is 35, two carbons, 24, and four hydrogen, that's 63. So C2H4Cl, that fragment would be 63. And then let us say the chlorine, the carbon to chlorine bond broke. But that, that would be 43. So it would be C3H7. That would be 43. We would have a fragment for 35, which would have been chlorine. So those are some possibilities. All right. So let's put these now on our chart. Excuse me, sir. Um so the chlorine would be a fragment by itself, the chloride, sorry, chloride um. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we have a fragment for 15. And so let's put on that. We have a next one for 29. All right. Let us say 43 is the most stable one. Let's make that the tallest peak. We have a next one for 49. Also, I have one for what? 63. All right. We have the molecular ion now, which is, could be the mass for the molecular ion peak. Anybody? If the molar mass of the compound is 78, what would be the mass of the molecular ion? 78. 78, right. It matter how high? No, this is just a sketch, you know. So no, it doesn't matter here, all right? So the import, the most important thing that you will have to do on the exam is to actually know how to draw these structures, all right? 
All right, so what I'm going to do now, you already know, I showed, you, I showed you the structure of the compound, right? So we know it's chloropropane. But what I'm going to do now is erase it. I'm going to erase the chloropropane, all of this, all right? But just imagine now, I had, given, I had given you this chart and told you it was a halo alkene. So now for this one, you are told it's a halo alkene. So first thing you should do is figure out the structure of the halo alkene. So first thing, the mass of bromine is 78, not 78. So fluorine is 20, let me, um, all right, so fluorine is at the number nine, it's so about 19, I think. Fluorine is 35, bromine is 80, if you average it. How do you know which one is the most stable? The tallest peak is the most stable one. So the person asking from the channel, the tallest one, that is the most stable peak. All right, so when you get an ala alkane, right, and you want to figure out the structure of the ala alkane, this is what you will do. All right, so. All right, so no, it cannot be bromine, right? Let us say, all right, in the interest of time, it is chlorine. So what you are going to do, right? You're going to subtract the mass of chlorine from 78. So you're going to say 70, so we're, so 78, take away 35, that would give you 43. The first thing I do, if you get a halo alkane, subtract the mass. Yes, the, the recording will be on the channel once it ends. So you subtract the mass of your halogen from the mass of the molecular ion. Secondly, no. All right, someone, how do we work out the number of carbons when it's a, f when it's a, f a fragment? What should we do when it's a fragment? Right. So 43 divided by 12, we would get 3.6. So should we, should we round it off? No, just leave it at the end. All right. So... It has three carbons, right? So we know already. So in, if you get this in under a minute, you can know the structure of your compound. So you know it has three carbons and it's chlorine. So you would know that 
this is the structure of your halo alkane, all right? So that is what you would do to get the structure, or the molecular formula, so which would be C3H7Cl. So that's your compound. All right, that's how you would do it. So if you get a halo alkane, just subtract the mass of the halogen first. Then to get the amount of carbons, you just work it like a fragment. And the reason we do it like a fragment, if you take off the halogen, what you have left is a fragment, it's not a complete alkane. So that is why we have to do it like a fragment. Because if you break, if you break the carbon to halogen bond here, what any amount of carbon remaining that is a fragment. All right, someone say how oh, we know it was Cl because we were working under the assumption, but we can figure it out as well, you know. So let's say it was fluorine. Fluorine is 19. Good. So if we say 78, Take away 19. That would leave me with how much now? That would leave me with 59. All right. And then I would say 59 divided by 12. 12, 5, 60. I would get five points. I would have five carbons, right? Now, what we're going to do is to see if this structure, so based on what we have, they're saying that if it was fluorine, we would have five carbons. One, two, three, four, five carbons with fluorine on it and the hydrogens. All right. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, 59 by 12 isn't 5. It's not 4.9. 1. 12, 5, 60. Oh, 12, 5 is 60. Right. So yeah. it, it is under the 5, right? Yeah. So it'll be 4. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Yes. All right, so the question now is, can if this is the structure, right, what is going to tell us if it is correct is if this structure can match the fragments here? The 63 and the 49, does it align with this structure? So can we get 63? All right, so look, what you will do, right? If you have 63, well, and I'm seeing some messages. It's four carbon, I believe. Yes, it's four, All right? So we have to adjust our calculations when it's the halo alkane, all right? So this is what you will do. Just like before, subtract your halogen from it, all right? So it is 63, subtract your halogen from it. Oh, I should point out, remember I gave you just before this, I told it, what did I tell you about these peaks? Did I say about 15, 29, and 43? Anybody remember? There are always hydrocarbons. Right, and the formulas are always fixed, right? So on any mass spectrum, 15 is always CH3, 29 is C2H5. This would be C3H7, all right? Now, that means once you see 49, once you see anything, remember now, after 43, 
the next one I gave you was 57 GC4H9. The reason why I'm telling you this, any number outside of these will have in the atom that does not make the compound a hydrocarbon, right? So the 15, the 29, 43, 57, those fragments are for hydrocarbons. So once you see 49 and 63, what would that tell you about that particular fragment? Would, would it be a hydrocarbon fragment? No, sir. Right. So that means those fragments must have been fluorine inside of it. Assuming fluorine is the halogen. All right, so let us check this now. So what you're going to do, write the mass of your fragment, subtract the mass of fluorine from it. 49 minus 19, that would be 30, right? Now 30, Divided by 12, you'll get two parts. Let me just read 30 divided by 12, you'll get 2.5, right? Which means that you must have two carbons. When you have two carbons, you must have five hydrogens, right? C2H5, that is a must for 29, right? So 29 and 30, right? It does not go to 30, it comes up to 29. Are you seeing that? So let me go again. Yes. So look, the hydrocarbon fragment. So remember, this is the halogen, fluorine. When you subtract it from the fragment, of 49, you end up with 30. 30 must be hydrocarbon, all right? But when you work out the hydrocarbon fragment, you are getting 29. So that means it's not fluorine. The structure is not matching up. All right? So if fluorine cannot give you these fragments, fluorine is not the halogen. So you move on to the next halogen now, all right? So if you want to know the halogen, do not pay attention to these fragments that you already know is a hydrocarbon fragment. Try the ones that you know most of in your halogen, all right? So let's try it now with chlorine. So how do we know the, the number of hydrogens? Can't answer that again. All right, I will answer it later. Now the number of hydrogen just subtract. When you work out the number of carbons, you add it up and subtract it from the mass of the fragment. All right. So we know it's not fluorine, and I hope you understand why. Let's move to chlorine now, all right? For this fragment now, 49, right? 49, take away 35, that would give you 14, right? So remember the 14 here, that's your hydrocarbon fragment. 35, that is your halogen. And remember, you know, we said that this fragment must have in your halogen because it does not correspond to a hydrocarbon fragment. So you subtract the halogen from the mass of the fragment. So it's the fragment minus the halogen, you get the 14. That is for the number of carbon plus hydrogen. So 14 divided by 12 that will have one carbon, all right? One carbon as a mass of 12. 
So 14 take away 12, that is two hydrogens, all right? So that means it is CH2. So CH2, that's 14 plus 35, it gives you back 49. So once you can get the fragment, it means you have the halogen. If you cannot get the fragment, you have the you have the wrong halogen. All right. So that fragment is CH2 Cl. In terms of the significant peaks, the, those are the ones with the numbers. So you can have other peaks in between, you know, but we are not interested in those. Only the one they give you the numbers for, all right? And you will work it out. Yes, it's a, if it's a trial and error, Basically, but you have to work quickly. So that is why I'm showing you all of these. So when you go on the exam, just practice it. When you go on the exam, it shouldn't take you, it shouldn't take you a long time because I pretty formally just plug it in quickly. All right. So because I just seen it now, it might look like a long process, but actually it will be quicker. So as you look at the chart, you would know to ignore these they are not going to help you, all right? You pick out these two. These are the fragments with the halogen. So you just work it out and see which halogen apply. We did fluorine, didn't work with fluorine, but we did chlorine, it worked. So we know our halogen is chlorine, all right? Let's do, 60, let's do 63 now. Sixty-three take away thirty-five. That's twenty-eight. So for the person that is asking on the channel, that is what I'm going to do now again. I am working out the number of carbon atoms for the fragment sixty-three. So the first thing I did, subtract the mass of my halogen from the mass of the fragment, and I get 28. This 28 is for carbon and hydrogen. But just like we normally do, you divide by 12. Twenty-eight divided by twelve. You know you're going to get two, all right? So we don't have to waste time there. So it will be two carbons, right? If you have two carbons, C2, sixty-three, twenty-eight, seven, twelve, twenty-four. Why four carbons? Let me see. How did we get 63? 28 divided by 12, that would be two. Oh, C2H4, yeah. All right, so two carbons, four hydrogens, 28. So would it be four though? Repeat. So would it be four because the end carbon would have um three plus the other would have two. So how is it four? Right. Give me a second. Let us check and see. All right. So no, it should have three carbons, right? In total. 
three carbons and chlorine anhydride. So it's not two, okay, at 28 divided by 12 would give two carbons. Right. What was the question exactly? Oh. This I'm saying this would give, remember it's a fragment, you know. So the molecule, it would break here. That is how you would get the two carbons with four hydrogens. So this part is 28 and the chlorine is 35 which would give you the 63. Okay. Understand now? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, so just bear in mind that we are breaking the, the, the molecule. All right, so let me see the question. No, C2H5, it would have been, if it was a hydrocarbon, as basically the chlorine as substituted a hydrogen. That is why it wouldn't be C2H5, and that is why it is not 29, it is 28, all right? So this fragment as in the chlorine, which substituted a hydrogen, that is why it is not the C2H5. <coughs> All right, question. No, I'm not going. I'm just going to do it. All right. No, all right. I'm going to put a little peak here, right? If I put a little peak here, what does that tell you? So one mass unit higher than the molecular right. peak. And what is the name of this peak? Here. M plus one. Plus one. All right. So let us so let us la label it again. So this peak is M plus one peak. This the molecular ion peak. It is the M plus peak, right? And this the tallest peak. That is our yes. base peak. So what does the M plus one peak tell us? There's an isotope. Isotope is present. All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put the next one here. All right. And I'm going to put 65 on it. I want you to draw the structure for 65. What do you think 65 is? Is it chlorine 37? Chlorine 37, exactly. So what I'm going to tell you now, right? You see. When you get a halogen, if you see the two peaks side by side, and they differ by two, it's, they are isomers, not isomers, isotopes. So, so sir, why won't it be an M plus? Which isotope did they use for the 78? Repeat. Which isotope did they use for the 78, like the molecular mass? Which isotope of chlorine? Oh, it, it would have been 35. So won't it be an M plus 2 peak then? The, the molecular ion peak here? Yeah, the M plus, the small peak after the 78. This. Because 35 and 37. 35 and 37? On oh, yeah. the, the difference of two, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, but could it not Wait. carbon isotope as well? Repeat. It isotope. could be carbon 30. Carbon 13. So could it be like yeah. isotopes of carbon 13 instead? It wouldn't work with this one. When you if you try to break it out, remember it's off by two. Yes, this sir. one, the 63 and the 65. Yes, sir. Right. If it was like a one, it's like you're off by one, you could substitute the carbon 13. All right. So you're saying, what, so so you're saying it's highly unlikely for us to find two isotopes of carbon 13 in one of these. Right? So are it's not, not, are not, not, not you're breaking up. Seven. 
are what I'm trying to tell you, right? For the exam, in terms of this, these questions for the Ayla Alkane, when you get an Ayla Alkane, if you see the two peaks, you get two peaks differing by a mass of two, you have a halogen. Sorry, they are isotope. So like domain BR seven, let me not tell you because I want to ask you a question of this paper. So that is why I'm telling you here now, you get a halo alkane. You see that you get two peaks that differ by this mass of two, you just know it's an isotope. So 63 and 65, they are isotopes. So your structure of your compound is not going to change. All right, so 63 and 65, the structure is not going to change. Why wouldn't the structure change? Anybody? And tell me. The electron yeah. that is lost is negligible. So it wouldn't really affect the overall mass of the mm -hmm. compound. 63 and the 65, you know. Why, even though the mass is different, the structure would be the same. You know, the answer, you know, does not tell me already, basically. Not neutrons. Because, well, because the same atom. Exactly, it's isotopes. So, what do we know about isotopes? They just differ in mass, do Exactly. Right. So, because it's an isotope. So, for the the sixty three, what was the structure for for sixty three again? What did we say it was C two H four? Right. So the only difference is that. My second. This chlorine is 35, and you would have the same exact structure again. Let me just draw about the structure again. So two carbons, chlorine on it. And this time, this chlorine is 37. So let us look the mass of this fragment and this fragment. You would see that this one would add up to 63 and this one add up to 65. So the structure is going to be the same. It's just that one atom is heavier in the compound. All right. Understand? Yes, sir. All right. So question yeah uh you have m plus over 78 and m plus, m go on continue is it that the m plus is 78 and the m plus one is 79 no the m won't give it and you won't get a number on it so when you get the chart you will only see this right you will only okay, see sir. that on the chart right but what I'm saying now on your chart, you don't have to get so you get the charts, you don't have to see this here. All right. But when you see it there, it's a sign that an isotope is present. Is that clear? So it won't Sorry. be on it won't be on every chart. That is why the first one I gave you. I don't remember if, if I had put one on it, but you don't have to have it on it, right? Once it's there though, it's an indication of the isotope being present, all right? And so again, just remember, I'm telling you, if you get the halogen and you get two fragments that differ in by two, just know that it is an isomer. So don't be there trying to draw, not isomer, isotope. So don't try to figure out how to draw one structure for 63 and the next structure for 65. It never work, all right? So that is why I'm letting you know. And so I'm going to give you the past paper now. Which year was it? I think it was 2018. I look for it and put it on the board. Um, sir. Yes. 
Where you have C to H5, isn't it supposed to be H6? Where? Uh, over the here? Out here? Yeah. It's, no, so remember, the reason why it's not C to H6 is because you have to remember we are doing a fragment. So let's say it was this, right? So H, 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 H. If the molecules break here, right? How many hydrogens in total are on this side? Five. Right, so that is why it is C2H5. Do not think of it like an alkane, where it is C2H6. Because remember, for the alkane, every carbon would have four bonds around it. But you have to remember that this one would have been attached to a carbon, not a hydrogen. And also that the bond was broken. All right? So for your fragment, it has one less hydrogen than, an, than a regular alkane. So as I said, the reason why it is not C2H6, as would the alkane be, is because this is actually a fragment and it would have been attached to a third carbon here. Is that any clearer? Yes, thank you. All right. So I'm going to clear the screen.